Last year, we made a video on the 2080 and 2070, speculating when they would launch and how fast they would be. This was back when Pascal's successor was thought to be Volta, and back when NVIDIA hadn't yet replaced GTX with RTX. Our speculation was based on the assumption that NVIDIA would not deviate from the schedule they had been following for years now. We assumed wrong. NVIDIA has launched Turing far behind their schedule, for far too high a price. To demonstrate, let's look at how previous generations stacked up against their direct predecessors, and extrapolate when Turing should have been launched, and later, where they should have been priced. From Fermi to Pascal, NVIDIA has taken on average 317 days to introduce the new product. Our figure was averaged from the number of days between launches of the 1080 Ti and 1080, 1080 and 980 Ti, 980 Ti and 980, 980 and 780 Ti, and so on, back to the GTX 480's launch in 2010. If NVIDIA had stuck to their schedule, the 2080 would have launched on 16th of January 2018, 317 days after the 1080 Ti. The actual 2080 launched 247 days after this, more than eight months late. A few might want us to only compare 80 to 80, ignoring the Ti's, like from the 780 to the 980 to the 1080. From Fermi to Pascal, NVIDIA took on average 451 days to go from 180 to the next. So the 2080 should have arrived on the 20th of August 2017. That's 395 days before the actual RTX 2080 launched. This seems way too soon after the 1080 Ti launched. So we think the January 2018 date we approximated earlier is more useful for our analysis. To make comparisons easy, we'll call our predicted card the GTX 2080 to signify continuity with previous GTX generations. We will then compare our GTX 2080 and GTX 2080 Ti to the actual RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti. Keeping with the 317 days NVIDIA took to move from card to card, our GTX 2080 Ti would have launched on 29th of November 2018, 63 days after the actual RTX 2080 Ti launched. This figure differs when we compare purely Ti to Ti, between Kepler and Pascal, NVIDIA took an average of 607 days to introduce the next TI. If they had stuck to this trend, our GTX 2080 TI would have launched on the 2nd of November 2018, 36 days after the actual RTX 2080 TI launched. At first glance, the RTX 2080 TI might seem to have launched early. However, the RTX 2080 TI is not a true 80 TI, as its performance improvements are more like the 80 than the 80 TI. More on that later. As for performance benchmarks, we use data from Tech Power Up as it's one of the very few sites that summarize their benchmark results into one chart for each resolution. We use their charts for 1440p and 1600p as it stresses the GPU harder than 1080p and so is less likely to have a CPU bottleneck. We opted not to use 4K as Tech Power Up's first benchmark of this resolution was the 900 series so we couldn't go all the way back to GTX 480 as we have with 1600p. Until Turing, new GeForce generations have always brought improvements in price to performance. The new card will be faster at the same price segment as the outgoing flagship. For instance, the GTX 580 was 116% as fast as the GTX 480 at the same $500 price point. The GTX 680 offered 130% the performance of the GTX 580 for the same $500. Things get slightly more complicated after that, as Nvidia fiddled with the prices of the subsequent 80s from $650 for the 780 to $550 for the 980 to $700 for the 1080. However, the principle remains the same. You'd get more performance per dollar with each new generation. As to how we calculate performance per dollar changes from one car to the next, we divided improvements in performance by changes in price. For example, Tech Power Up found the 980 to be 105.26% as fast as the 780 Ti at 1440p. At $550, the 980 cost 78.57% as much as the $700 780 Ti, a 105.26% improvement in performance divided by 78.57%. The cost amounts to 133.97%. In other words, the 980 offered 134% the performance per dollar that the 780 Ti did. 
and 118% the performance per dollar that the 780 did after Nvidia had dropped the 780's price to $500. Similarly, the 1080 offered 127% the performance per dollar that the 980 Ti did, and 119% the performance per dollar of the 980 after the 980's cost had been dropped to $500. Turing marks the first time since the 780 that a new GeForce generation has regressed in performance per dollar. Using TechPowerUp's 1440p results, the 2080 offers 95% the performance per dollar the 1080 Ti did. The RTX 2080 Ti fares even worse, offering only 77% the performance per dollar of the 1080 Ti. What would Turing cost if there was no regression in cost per frame? If bang for the buck stayed exactly the same with no regression or indeed improvement, the 2080 Ti would cost around 31% to 35% more than the 1080 Ti, given that it performs 31% to 35% faster when it isn't constrained by CPU bottlenecks. In raw numbers, the 2080 Ti would have to sell at $910 to $945 to have the same cost per frame as the 1080 Ti. Meanwhile, the 2080 would cost exactly as much as the 1080 Ti given that it's barely any faster than the Pascal flagship. This might already seem to be the case with the 2080's MSRP, but most if not all 2080's are selling for more than its Founders Edition, which is already priced at $800, $100 above the 1080 Ti. With all that said, Turing is a new generation, and new generations used to bring better bang for your buck. How would the 2000 series be priced if Turing continued that pattern of improvement? From card to card, new GeForce products showed on average 118.8% the performance per dollar of their preceding flagship. If Turing had kept up that trend, the 2080 would have cost $640, similar to the GTX 780. For those of you who want to see the calculation done purely on 80 to 80 trends, the 2080 would have cost $600 if we didn't take historical price drops into account, and $649 if we do. Either way, the 2080 would have cost between $600 and $649, which fits right in line with the 1080 and 780. However, we have not yet taken VRAM trends into account. The 2080 is the first 80 since the 580 to not bring an increase in VRAM. The 680 had 33% more VRAM than the 580. The 780 had 50% more VRAM than the 680. The 980 had 33% more VRAM than the 780 the 1080 had 100% more VRAM than the 980. The 2080 has exactly as much VRAM as the 1080. Some may say the 2080 having GDDR6 justifies the lack of increase, but the 1080 brought a doubling of VRAM along with the move to GDDR5X from Maxwell's GDDR5. The VRAM issue looks even worse when you look at how new 80 stacked up to old TIs historically. At 4 gigabytes, the 980 had 33.33% more VRAM than the 780 Ti's 3 gigabytes. The 1080 brought the exact same improvements in VRAM capacity over the 980 Ti, along with the move to GDDR5X. The 2080 should have likewise had 33% more VRAM than the 1080 Ti, which equates to 14 to 15 gigabytes. Instead, the 2080 has 8 gigabytes, 3 less than the 1080 Ti. This marks yet another regression for the 2080. You might say there's little difference in 8GB versus 11GB, but RTX is marketed as a beast for today's games and tomorrow's. We may soon have games that require more than 8GB at their higher settings, a requirement the 1080 Ti will handle better than the 2080. Some might say the 2080's GDDR6 makes up for the 3GB deficiency but that doesn't appear to be the case with games that already push past 8GB at higher settings. Case in point, Hardware Canuck's 4K benchmark of Wolfenstein's The New Colossus measured the 2080 delivering less than half the performance of the 1080 Ti, with the minimum frame rate dipping below the crucial 30 frames per second. The reviewer concluded that 8GB frame buffer and lower memory bandwidth caused a severe bottleneck, at 448 gigabytes a second, the 2080 has lower memory bandwidth than the 1080 Ti's 484 gigabytes a second. In our view, if the 2080 could not follow the historical trend of increasing VRAM from the preceding Ti, it should have at least matched the 1080 Ti's 11 gigabytes. Adjusting for this deficiency, the 2080 should have cost between $436 to $472. This price makes it seem less like an 80 and more like a 70. 
But that's what we think the 2080 is, the Turing 70 in the guise of an 80. To demonstrate, let's look at how Maxwell and Pascal's 70s stacked up to their preceding generation's flagships. Compared to the $700 780 Ti, the $330 970 was 1.59% faster at 1080p, 1.64% faster at 1440p, and 3.44% faster at 4K. At 4GB, the 970 also had 133% VRAM to the 780Ti's 3. The 1070's 8GB showed the same proportional increase in VRAM from the 980Ti's 6GB, and the performance improvement from Maxwell to Pascal was even bigger. Compared to the $650 980Ti, the $450 1070 was 13.64% faster at all resolutions. At $450, the 1070 brought more performance improvements over the 980Ti than the $800 2080 did over the 1080Ti. Across all resolutions, Tech Power Up measured the 2080 to perform 8.7% faster than the 1080Ti, while TechSpot found it just 1% faster. Another reminder that the 2080 has only 73% the VRAM the 1080Ti has while the 1070 had 133% the VRAM the 980Ti did. At this point, our VRAM adjusted price for the 2080 seems too generous at $436 to $472. If we judge the 2080 for not having 133% the VRAM of the 1080Ti, we get a price of $349, which sits midway between the MSRP of the 1070 and 970. This is reflective of the performance improvement the 2080 brought over the 1080Ti, more than what the 970 brought over the 780Ti, but less than the improvement the 1070 brought over the 980Ti. Enough about the 2080. What about the 2080Ti? At $1,200, the 2080Ti is the most expensive Ti yet, and the exorbitant price has resulted in a regression in performance per dollar from Pascal. The 2080 Ti offers only 78% the bang for buck the 1080 Ti did. At 133% the performance of the 1080 Ti, the 2080 Ti is also the least revolutionary Ti in recent memory. For comparison, the 1080 Ti performed 175% as fast as the 980 Ti, which in turn performed 141% as fast as the 780 Ti. In terms of cost efficiency, the 1080Ti brought 162.9% the performance per dollar that the 980Ti did. The 980Ti brought 151.67% the performance per dollar the 780Ti did. On average, the move from Ti to Ti brought 157% the performance per dollar of the previous Ti. What would the 2080Ti be like if it had followed this historical trend of improvement? We know the 2080Ti is as fast as it gets but we wonder what it would have cost if it hadn't regressed in performance per dollar. As the 2080 Ti performs 133% as fast as the 1080 Ti, it would have cost $593 if it had followed the average performance per dollar improvement from Ti to Ti. This might seem absurdly cheap, but remember the 2080 Ti has improved less than all Ti's before it, so it makes sense for it to be the cheapest Ti yet. We haven't even considered the fact that TIs used to double in memory before Turing, as our calculator price would drop even further if we judged a 2080 Ti for not meeting that trend. As it stands, $593 seems less like an 80 Ti and more befitting of an 80. But this is exactly what we think the 2080 Ti is, an 80 in the guise of an 80 Ti. To demonstrate, the 33% faster performance the 2080 Ti brought over the 1080 Ti is close to the 37% improvement the 1080 brought over the 980 Ti and nowhere near the 75% faster performance the 1080 Ti brought over the 980 Ti. The 2080 Ti is also the only Turing card to be significantly faster than the Pascal flagship without any compromise in memory. In previous generations, this would have been an 80, in terms of performance, the 580, 680, 780, 980 and 1080 all brought unmitigated improvements over their preceding flagships without any regression. For that matter, so did their corresponding 70s. The 2080 Ti being Turing's 80 also explains why it launched with the architecture, instead of being delayed like Kepler, Maxwell and Pascal Ti's were. If it was similarly delayed, Turing's fastest card would be the 2080 a card that trades blows with a 1080Ti while having three fewer gigabytes of VRAM. 
Turing would have been the first generation to bring no improvements in performance, while also the first to regress in memory-intensive titles. NVIDIA could have stuck to their own trends and branded the Turing flagship the 2080. That might have been worth $800, even though this is still a historically unprecedented price. Alas, this is not the path they took, and many blame a lack of competition from AMD. That brings an interesting perspective on the 1080 Ti. At the time of its launch in March 2017, AMD had no competition to the 1080, let alone the 1080 Ti. Their Vega was at least five months away. Nevertheless, Nvidia replaced their then $700 1080 with the 1080 Ti at the same price, dropping the 1080's price to $550 for the Founders Edition. There was no pressing need to do this. Nvidia could have easily kept the 1080 at $700 until AMD released their Vega, at which point they could have dropped the 1080 Ti on the market along with the 1080 price drop. Why didn't they? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. To conclude, Nvidia branded the Turing 70 the 2080 and the Turing 80 the 2080 Ti. A few might argue this was justified by the two new technologies introduced with Turing, DLSS and ray tracing. There are no ray trace titles available to analyze at the moment, though Turing buyers are still paying a steep premium for it. As for DLSS, TechSpot analyzed the two titles that showcased the feature at 4K and concluded anyone with an older GPO, say a Pascal branded 1080 Ti, could simply run games at 1800p and get similar performance and visual quality to DLSS on an RTX 2080. That leaves just ray tracing to justify Turing's insane prices. And given that there's not one title you can use it in yet, it does not look good for Turing or indeed the consumer. That wraps up our analysis of Turing, overdue and overpriced. Our next hardware analysis will explore which is faster and by how much. 50% more cores or 50% more threads. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified as soon as it's out. Do you play Rainbow Six Siege or Dota 2? Check out our other channel for analytical guides for both games. Link is in the description and on the screen. While you're here, feel free to watch the history of loot boxes, the founder's farce, how Nvidia is delegitimizing their MSRP, and our four-part de nouveau analysis where we explore its history, its performance impact, and why developers stick with it even after it's cracked.